Hi, everyone. So welcome to the stream today and really excited for having you once again uh, in our next session. And we have about three more weeks to go. Three weeks from now, we are almost done with the syllabus and we are getting excited into what we have to do in order to increase our chances of ultimately passing the examination. So welcome to the new week. Welcome to uh our discussion today and today is going to be very special because i want to share with you um the various verbs that the examiner is going to be using and how we are going to be answering the question generally because if in the exam hall the examiner says uh evaluate discuss explain recommend what does that mean how are you supposed to write out your answers in those contexts and these are the verbs that the examiner is going to be using in the exam hall so in as much as you are going to be learning and understanding about the scope of the exams the key areas you have to focus on it is important for you to also understand the verbs that the examiner is going to be using in the exam hall so that you can really increase your chances of actually passing the examination it is also going to be an avenue where i'm going to be taking your questions and uh, provide you with some answers as well so if there are any questions you have don't hesitate put it in the chat for me i want to hear from you provide you with some answers so we can assist you in order for you to prepare well for the examination and most importantly pass the exams so going into the exam hall what are the verbs that the examiner is going to be using and how do we answer the question? Because if you go into whatever paper that you are writing, let me bring up my screen uh, in a moment and then give you an example of what I'm trying to say here. Let me make this a full screen. So let me give you an example of what I'm trying to say here. It's advanced taxation. Okay, so look at look at what we have here. For instance, this is public sector accounting and finance. So look at the verbs that the examiner is using here. You could see here, you could see explain, discuss, then discuss, recommend. Okay, now you scroll down. This is a computation aspect without a problem. Then you see discuss. Scroll down, it says um, explain. You see it says explain, explain, explain explain suggests okay then you see explain assess discuss these are all verbs that the examiner is going to be using in the exam hall but the question we need to ask ourselves is if the examiner says you should assess the examiner says you should discuss the examiner says you should explain what exactly does he mean and what are we expected to generally write about if the examiner says something like that and that is what i want to go through with you today because like i mentioned earlier it is one thing for you to understand the structure of the exams it is one thing for you to say yeah i understand i know question one what is going to be there i know when if i'm doing corporate reporting accounting standards will be there consolidation will be there ratios will be there Ethics will be there. Business valuation, corporate reconstruction, one of them will be there. I understand. But what if the examiner brings those verbs in the written part of the question? What am I expected to say? How am I expected to put my answers? That is exactly what I intend uh, discussing with you today. So stay with me carefully. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Put it in the chat for me. Put it in the comment section for me. I really, really want to hear from you and provide you with some answers on anything that you want me to share my thoughts on. So let me go straight up. This is not anything. This is available uh, online on the ACCA uh, website. So on the ACCA website, they provide some of these key verbs. That we must understand what they are and how we use them in the exam also i'm gonna go through these key verbs from the acca and also uh share my thoughts on uh how they are going to be playing out in the question and if the examiner mentions them how you are supposed to actually answer questions relating to these key verbs you ready let's go the first verb is analyze so if you read a question and the examiner says, analyze the performance of the organization, analyze the nature of the entity's financial issues, analyze the above scenario and explain what has to be done. So if the question says, 
analyze. That is the requirement of the question. We are to analyze. How do you put your answers up? To analyze means break into separate parts and discuss, examine, or interpret each part. So if the examiner says analyze something, it means you break into the separate part. So let me bring up my writing part here and, and show you. So usually you're going to be seeing this in subjects like public sector accounting and finance, where it says analyze the performance of the organization. Okay, analyze the performance of the organization. You're going to see this in public sector accounting and finance. You're going to see this in corporate reporting. You're going to see this in financial reporting. You're going to see this in management accounting and a couple of other subjects, depending on the context. So if the examiner says, analyze, sorry. If the examiner says, analyze, what is he saying? It means we have to break it down into the separate part, discuss, examine, or interpret each part. So that is why, if you remember in ratios, if the examiner says, analyze the financial performance and position of the company, as you know already, we are going to be analyzing the financial performance. And in the financial performance, this is where you're going to be talking about the individual ratios. So depending on the ratios we calculated, you have to take the parts called Rosie and talk about Rosie. You have to take asset turnover and talk about asset turnover. You have to take a uh, net profit margin and talk about net profit margin. Then you come to financial position. It means that we are going to be talking about maybe the liquidity position of the entity or the gearing position of the entity and other efficiency ratios. So if the question says, analyze, this is what it means. Now, if you're in public sector accounting and finance, the same idea. So let's say that we are doing ratios because ratios is one of the things the examiner may be bringing when it comes to performance evaluation for public sector entities. So let's say we are doing ratios. If you are doing ratios for uh, with that and we are supposed to analyze the performance of the entity, depending on the kind of thing that we are doing. So if it is common size and the examiner says we should analyze or it is ratio analysis and the examiner says we should analyze or it is budget variance analysis where we're going to be using PFA to analyze. That means you're going to take each part and discuss it individually. You take each part and discuss it individually. So that is the first terminology that you are going to be hearing. And like I said, analyze will come in for public sector, financial reporting, corporate reporting, management accounting. The key thing is that anytime you hear the examiner saying analyze something, it means break it into the individual parts, discuss each of the parts or interpret what is going on. A key tip given is that you give reasons for the current situation or what has happened. That is why, for instance, if you are interpreting the financial performance of an entity and the Rosie has increased, maybe it is the same entity and Rosie has increased, you have to state the reason why the Rosie has gone up. The asset turnover has reduced. You have to state the reason why the asset turnover. Because analyzing means breaking it into the parts, giving reasons why that uh, result is being seen for the period under review. Why that result is being it's seen for the period under review. That is the first thing that we must understand when we talk about dealing with the verbs that the examiner is going to be using and how we structure our answers generally out. Any questions, you raise your hand, we bring... Did I say raise your hand? Sorry. Any questions, you put it in the chat or the comment session for me. We are also live on LinkedIn. So for those of you watching us on LinkedIn, you can also uh, put in the comment session any questions you have for me or something you would want me to share my thought on. Today we are live on LinkedIn as well. So we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, as well as on Facebook and trying to reach across. So that is the first verb the examiner is going to be using, analyzing. 
Second, apply. Apply. Apply means to put into action pertinently and or relevantly. Now, usually you're going to hear apply in the strategic case study. Usually we're going to be hearing apply in strategic case study or sometimes rarely we're going to see that in maybe management accounting. But here we are going to be given a scenario. And so based on the scenario, the examiner would ask us to apply a specific concept or a specific principle. The examiner will ask us to apply a specific concept or a specific principle. That is another verb that the examiner can use in asking our questions. Number three, assess. Assess. What does this mean if the examiner says assess? Assess means to judge the worth, the importance, evaluate or estimate the nature, quality, ability, extent, or significance of something. So it means that you need to determine the strength and weakness, the importance, the significance, or the ability to contribute. That is what we mean by to assess. To assess. So you judge the worth, the importance. You evaluate something. So it means that assess has some relationship with analysis. Are you getting it? However, if we are looking at assessing, that means that we have to bring out some strength of the company or the strength of the entity as well as some weaknesses as per the context of the question. As per the context of the question. That is what it means to assess. So when we are assessing something, definitely you have to bring out the strength, you have to bring out the weaknesses. That is the third thing. That is the third thing. I see some of you guys joining. You are welcome. Give us a thumbs up on the video if you're getting some value. Also share the video. Let's see if we can reach as many students as possible because this is a crucial, crucial issue you must understand because if you don't get the verb right, you will end up writing the wrong answer and not be able to get all the marks that is allocated to the question that we are looking at. Fahad Nuhu. On Facebook said, you are always special, sir. Thank you very much for that. And also, still on Facebook, upon Peter Justice, Edward As uh, Asante, uh, Carlton Malone, Amino Sam, Kwabena Wasti, Shataba Foster, Abukari, Gafaru, and then Fahad Nuhu. Thank you guys for the thumbs up on the video. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Next one is calculate. This is obvious. We don't need a miracle for that. So calculate means to ascertain by computation. But you see, it is very important that you provide description along with a numerical calculation. This is what many students don't do. So let's say, for instance, in management accounting, the examiner said, oh, calculate the... Uh, Maybe let's say we are doing uh, investment appraisal. So we are doing investment appraisal. Then the examiner says, calculate the break-even rate. You know the break-even rate is the same as the internal rate of return. It is the same as the rate at which the MPV of the project is going to be zero. So the examiner says, calculate the break-even rate. You don't just say, eh, the examiner says, calculate the break-even rate, so you end there. No. It is required that when you do the calculation, add a short description of what the heck is going on. So if you calculated the internal rate of return of the company, and it is whatever the heck, let's say 15%. If the internal rate of return is 15%, what does that mean? So even though the question said calculate, in, in, in accounting, we don't just uh, calculate something and go away. There has to be a usage for the results that we obtained. So if you calculated the internal rate of return as 15%, what should we use it for? So even though the examiner didn't say 
assess whether the project should be accepted or not, and the examiner just said, calculate the IRR, you have to go ahead after the calculation and say, and bring the decision rule. You know that if the IRR is greater than the cost of capital of the company, we accept the project. And if the IRR is less than the cost of capital, we reject the project. So what does that mean? It means that if you calculated the internal rate of return and it was 15%, were we giving the cost of capital of the company in the question? If yes, then you write up that since the internal rate of return is greater than or less than, the project should be accepted or the project should not be accepted. The examiner didn't ask you that second description part, but it is always important to write it out. This is actually a concern that the management accounting examiner for the ICA has raised, that students just calculate and they go away, forgetting that the calculation must be used to make a certain decision. So that is the next thing that you have to understand. Calculate. Calculate. Yes, it is about obtaining uh, something by computation, but it is important that you provide description along with numerical calculation. I hope you are getting the, the, the deal here. It's very, very important because you see, if for instance, it's an IRR question and the question is 10 marks and the requirement was just calculate the internal rate of return or calculate the break-even rate. You think the calculation alone will, call, will give you that 10 marks? No. The description as to whether the project should be undertaken or not is going to be taking maybe around two marks of the 10 mark. So you're not writing that short description of what the calculation you just did will be used for means you are losing potentially two marks. Means you are losing potentially two marks. Are we getting the concept here? That is the idea. So when the examiner says calculate, don't just calculate and end there. Again, another illustration is in public sector accounting and uh, finance. Under PIFA, the examiner may ask you to calculate something. Okay, maybe we have an indicator available and the examiner asks you, maybe you are using the weakest link method or the average method depending on what you have. Then the examiner says, uh, and we the average method is M2, weakest link is M1. So the examiner says, calculate the uh, results for a certain indicator, maybe financial reporting or financial integrity. You calculate it. So based on the average method, you got something that, okay, the answer is C. What is the meaning of C? You have to interpret it. So even though the question just said calculate, you don't calculate and end it there. You have to give us a short description of exactly what is going on. And if you remember with PIFA, it is A, B, C, and D. But it has a numerical implication. A is 4, B is 3, C is 2, D is 1. So if we, and A, it means that uh, we are doing uh, well, good, I mean, average here, this is poor, uh, and I, no, no, this is poor rather, this is average, this is good, and this is very good. So for whatever indicator you calculated, let's say the result you got C, using the average method, you got C. If it is C, it means that whatever indicator you got has a performance of what? Average. So you don't just do the calculation and go away. And the examiner said I should do the calculation. So I did it. So bye-bye. Au revoir, mesoué. Dabi. Au revoir, mesoué. You are losing some marks. You have to write out a short description. Are you getting the idea here? That is calculate. That is calculate. So you don't just calculate and jump over. You calculate and provide description along with a numerical calculation. That will enhance the total marks or your ability to get the entire marks generally.
the ability to get the entire mark generally. The same thing happens to even financial reporting and corporate reporting. Maybe the examiner says so. Calculate the amounts that will be recognized in the financial statements. It is prudent that you provide us, okay, that the above transaction will be accounted for in accordance with maybe IFRS, whatever the heck, nine financial instruments accounted for as a financial asset held uh, at fair value through PL or at fair value through OCI. Whatever be the case, you, you write some description down. That will enable you to let the examiner understand that, oh, okay, you know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking about. I see some of you guys joining. You are welcome. We are looking at the key verbs used by the examiner in the exam hall and how we can answer questions uh, in the exam hall when these verbs are uh, given to us or provided to us. So let's look at the next one. The next thing is comment. 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 When the examiner says comment, it simply means to remark or express opinion. So if the examiner says comment on the performance of the organization, comment on the ethical issues in the scenario, it means express your opinion. Now, in doing that, it is required that your answer should include an explanation, illustration, or criticisms, depending on the context of the question. Depending on the context of the question. So if the examiner says, comment on the ethical issues. And these are something that are pretty common. Comment on the ethical issues. comment on the ethical issues. Or the examiner can say, comment on the performance of the organization. Okay, or comment on the observation by management. By management, or comment on the decision by management in audit and assurance, advanced audit and assurance, we could have that scenario coming in generally. So if we say comment, it means express an opinion. But as you are expressing that opinion, you are explaining, you are giving some illustration where possible, and also you may be criticizing because comments can come from explanation, can come from illustration, can come from criticism. Can come from criticism. Next one is compare. Compare. This is also a terminology that the examiner can use. Now, if the examiner says compare, it means examine two or more things to identify their similarities and differences. Compare. Compare. You are examining two things. So uh, as you are examining two things, you are bringing down the similarities and also the differences that exist between them. You're bringing out the similarities and the differences that exist between them. Then, conclusion. Conclusion. Now, this means the result or outcome of an act or a process or event, final arrangement or settlement. End your answer well with a clear decision. Conclusion. Conclusion. So, it means that here you are reaching a clear decision as to whether what is good or what is not good. Another terminology or verb the examiner could use is criticize. What does it mean if we say criticize? It means present the weaknesses or problems. Evaluate comparative with. Don't explain the situation. Instead, analyze it. So when we say you are criticizing something, it means that you analyze it. 
okay? And you present the weaknesses or problem. You evaluate what is happening there. So criticize means that you are coming in from the position of negativity. Are you getting the idea? You are coming in from the position of negativity and finding out what is wrong or what is negative about the question, about the scenario, about the situation that you are presented with. That is the idea about to criticize, present the weakness. So if the examiner says, criticize the statement, and some of these scenarios may come up for us in maybe uh, auditing, audit and assurance, or even strategic case study, some of these things may come up, or it could come up in what we call public sector accounting and finance, where somebody has made a statement and the examiner will ask you to criticize the statement made by the person. Where the examiner says, criticize the statement made by the person. In that case, you have to present the weakness, the problems in that particular question. Next one, define. To define simply means you give the meaning, usually a meaning specific to the cause. You have to be specific. That is what it means to define. You give the specific meaning for the thing. So it means you explain ex the exact meaning because usually definitions are short. Define the exact meaning. Define the exact meaning. So define the following term. Define the following term. Ethics. Corporate governance. Okay? Environmental accounting. Throughput accounting. Define. Directly state exactly what the meaning is. And it's short. It's one-liner. Definition is usually one-liner. One liner, and you go in, hit it hard, boom, you're gone. You go in, hit it hard, boom, you are gone. That is the idea about define. So that is what define is. I'm seeing some charts coming in. Let's see if I can look at them quickly. What do I have here? Samson Beng Benges is a thank you so I think much. Insurer Premium watching from Zimbabwe. Thanks for joining us from Zimbabwe. Then we have Senam Brights saying uh, hello, Insurer. Hi, Senam. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us on the stream. Uh, and I see some of you guys coming up. You're welcome. Give us a thumbs up on the video. We are looking at how you are going to be answering the question in the exam hall. The various verbs that the examiner is going to be using and these verbs, how you actually provide answers in response to the verbs when they are asked in the exam hall. But also, I'll be taking some questions from you. So if there are any questions, something you would want me to share my thought on, don't hesitate to put it in the comment section for me or in the chat for me. I'm going to be providing you with some answers as well. Next terminology, describe. When the examiner says you should describe something, it means give a detailed account or key features. It means you have to list characteristics, qualities, and parts. In other words, you are making a picture in words of what we are talking about. So when we say describe something, it means you are painting a picture. You're like an artist trying to paint a paint picture in the minds of anybody who is reading it to have a simple understanding. That is what we mean by to describe. So when the examiner should ask you, Describe the following types of public-private partnership arrangements. Okay? Describe the following types of public-private partnership arrangements. Build, operate, and transfer. Build, own, and operate. Boo. Service concession. Service concession. 
If the examiner says, describe these, it means paint a clean picture. So what are you going to do? One liner, you're going to be defining what this is, give us a short definition, then you can give us some key features of it. And for those of you doing public sector, we've done these things in detail. So when the examiner says describe, describe means like, show us, describe, G give us a scenario so that we can understand it. We can picture what exactly you're saying. Boo, the same thing. So when the examiner says you should describe something, it means you should give a detailed account of it. Now, you see, it is based on the verb used that determines how you write your answers and not just the mark allocation. Let me say that very well. Yes, the mark allocation contributes to how we write our answers out. However, the verb in the question determines how we write the answers out. Because sometimes the examiner can say, discuss something or describe something, but the mark there is just two. That doesn't mean you say, oh, it's just two marks, so um, uh, I would just give one line and go away. No, the key verb is describe. So if the examiner says describe, you have to give a detailed account. So even though the mark there is just two, the answer will be based on the verb of the question. And this is very important. This is very important. So because normally when it comes to the written papers or written part of the questions, students are like, okay, Shira, um, the mark is two marks. So it means I'm not supposed to write much. Or it is a five mark question. It means I'm not supposed to write much. No, it depends on the verb being used. Because if the examiner says you should compare and it is three marks, you know what you're supposed to do. Bring the similarities, bring the differences. So if it is, is, it is just two marks, it is just three marks, but you still have to obey the verb and let your answer be in line with the verb and not just the mark allocation. So you need to balance the two. You need to balance the two. Next one, discuss. Discuss. When we say discuss, it means you consider and debate or argue about the pros and cons of an issue. It means you examine in detail by using arguments in favor or against. Discuss. So like they list, what I was showing you a moment ago here, look at it here. Uh, this is a question from the ICA, for instance. It says, discuss the effects of the above proposal on the fiscal balance and debt sustainability of the country. Three marks. Discuss the effects of the above proposals on the fiscal balance and debt sustainability of the country. Discuss. Discuss, what does that mean? Like we just said, it means that you are supposed to what? Argue. You examine in detail by using argument in favor or against. So it is three marks, but you need to ensure that you write. So it means that key tips here, you write about any conflict, compare, and contrast. You write about any conflict, compare, and contrast. Next one is evaluate. It means that determine the scenario in the light of the argument for or against. Mention evidence, cases, point, issue to support your evaluation. So this goes like you are analyzing as well. They have the same uh, idea. So evaluate the performance of the company, okay, using various ratios like I've illustrated earlier. If you are using whatever, let's say you're using Rosie. Evaluate the performance of the company. You are using Rosie. That is why you don't just say, eh, the Rosie has gone up by 20%. Yeah, we know. We've seen it. From the calculation, we've seen that the ratio has gone up by 20%. Why is that? You have to provide us with what? Evidence. You have to provide evidence. Issues to support whatever evaluation that you are making. 
to support whatever evaluation that you are making. That is very important. Next one, explain. Explain means you make an idea clear, show logically how a concept is developed, and give reason for an event. So you don't just provide a list of points, add in some explanation of the point you are discussing. So the examiner says, explain. <laughs> this is what many people do. The examiner says, oh, explain five factors of, what can I say? Explain five factors to be taken into consideration when adopting an, uh, the IPSAS. So adoption of IPSAS, five factors. Explain five factors when it comes to adoption of IPSAS. Then you see people writing points down. You see people writing points down. The readiness of managers of uh, covered entities. Then they think they are done. They go to the second point. Then they write. The examiner says, explain. He didn't say state. State is you write the points down. That's all. But when the examiner says explain, it means you go further. Are you getting it? So don't just provide a list of points, but you add some explanation of the points you are discussing because it says explain. Explain means you make an idea clear. You show logically how a concept is developed. You show logically how a concept is developed. That is what we mean by explain. Explain. So don't just write. And, and I see this a lot uh, with my students. When we do assignments, people send me scripts. Requirements of the question says explain. Then people are just writing one-liner. People are just writing one-liner. People are just writing one-liner. But a question said explain five factors to be considered. Explain uh, three factors to be considered. Explain what the entity should consider. Then people are just writing points down. You will get less than the mark you are supposed to get. Because the question didn't say state, it says explain. Explain. All right? Next one, illustrate. Illustrate means you give concrete evidence. Explain clearly by using comparison or examples. So you add some description. Illustrate. Illustrate. It is a terminology, or, sorry, it's a verb that the examiner uses in public sector that uses in management accounting, that can be used in financial reporting, advanced audit and assurance, it cuts across. So when the examiner says illustrate, it means you give a concrete example of what you are trying to explain. So you're going to explain clearly by using comparisons or examples. Interpret. Yes, it works in the jungle of analysis and evaluation. So interpret means you comment on, give an examples, or you describe the relationships of something. You describe the relationship of something. That is what we mean by interpret. List. List means list. It means don't discuss, just make the list. So that is where if the examiner says, for instance, list five factors to be considered when adopting IPSAS, then readiness of managers of covered entities. You just list, you don't explain. Are you getting it? So you are. some people are listing when the question says you should explain. Then people are explaining when the question says they should list. Again, you are approaching it wrongly. And when that happens, you get less than the mark you're supposed to get. And you end up wasting time on things that you're not supposed to do. So if the question says list, don't discuss, write your answer in a simple sentence. Write your answer in a simple sentence. Next one outline what is that it means you describe the main idea characteristics or event it means you briefly explain the highlighted points 
outline 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 so outline is like you state and explain you state and explain so you raise the point but then you have to explain the point you have to dis describe the point a little bit briefly 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 that is the keyword briefly explain don't come and write essay for us briefly explain some of you don't know the difference between briefly explain and explain in detail <laughs> gotta be careful on that then prepare prepare will be to set out a response using an appropriate format so this is where the examiner will say or oh, prepare the statement of financial performance prepare the statement of financial position prepare the statement of budget performance prepare the consolidated financial statements so usually if the examiner says you should prepare it means there is a format you have to follow and uh, you follow that format for the computation there next one recommend Recommend means you advise the appropriate actions to pursue in terms of, in terms the recipient will understand, in terms the recipients will understand. It means you are giving an advice or a counsel. Please be careful. So now, again, this is used by the examiner. So let me bring you up with this. Remember, this is August 2022 examination, public sector, ICA. There is a recommend here. Look at it for six marks. Question one, B, I, I. What is the question there? Recommend four strategies in ensuring effective implementation of IPSAS. Recommend four strategies in ensuring effective implementation of IPSAS. What does that mean? You advise the entity. That's the key word we are using here. Recommend means we are giving counsel on how they can effectively do what they want to do. So anytime the examiner says you should recommend, you are providing an appropriate course of action that must be taken that will enable the said objective that the entity is pursuing to be achieved by the entity. That the said objective that the entity is pursuing will be achieved by the entity that is what we mean by to recommend that is what we mean by recommend next one relate it's a rare verb that the examiner uh may use on us a pretty rare verb but the examiner can use that on us depending on the context of the question. And usually this verb will be uh, used in the context of uh, subjects such as um, advanced audit and assurance, uh, maybe sometimes in public sector accounting and finance. And it depends on the context of the question, usually for the examiner when applying this. But relate means you show the connection between ideas or events. So you relate to real time examples so you give some practical things in that particular case then state state means state so you focus on the exact point you focus on the exact point and be precise so you have to be precise when it comes to this then the last verb is you summarize 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 means you give a brief condensed account and you include conclusion avoid unnecessary details summarize means you give a brief condensed account remember you conclude your solution or your explanation always so these are the various verbs that the examiner is going to be using in your exam hall irrespective of the subject that you are writing when the public sector like i've shown you 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 saw these things there in that particular case um discuss recommend state explain it's gonna be there like i like we have explained and gone through know the verb 
and know what you're supposed to write as your answer. And like I said, yes, it is important to take into consideration the mark allocation to the question that you are trying to answer. But it is more important to take into consideration the verb that the examiner is using in the question. Because sometimes the examiner is excited about the exams and he can just say, state something, then there is 10 marks there. State, then there is 10 marks there. Then you see something, explain, then it is two marks. So someone thinks that, okay, state, 10 marks, explain, two marks. So that is why people end up in state, then they are explaining things because they think the mark is a lot, so I need to write plenty. But the verb there is state. It means exactly to the point. Give us a, a single line, one-liner exactly to the point, boom, go away. But explain means give us some description briefly don't just write the points down but give us give us some description of the point so it is not just about the marker location it is about the verb used by the examiner assess evaluate discussed summarize all these verbs you have to know them pretty well so that you know how to answer the questions any questions please any questions, you can put it in the chat for me. See some of you guys joining us on YouTube as well. You're welcome. Give us a thumbs up on the video and also comment in the chat box. Any questions you have for me and uh, something that you want me to share my thought on. Samson Benghazi said, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Um, Senam Bright said, thank you, Inshira. Always a pleasure, Senam. Thanks for joining us on the stream. Any other questions, put it in the chat for me. So this is really something crucial that I want to share with you. Because like I tell you all the time, some of you, the reason why you fail the exams, it's not because you don't know. But it's because of some minor, minor issues. Like you don't manage your time well, and we're going to be talking about time and the way you approach questions in the exam all about timing on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I'm going to be coming your way again, and we're going to be talking about time allocation and how you approach the questions in that particular case. Time allocation and how you approach the questions in that particular case. So it's very important for you to understand that. I'm seeing another quest, uh, comment coming in. Let's see if I can take that. Uh, Nana Mbra said, do you still hold a class at Dansoman? Yes, our office is still at Dansoman, but... Uh, currently, our like for instance, this semester, all our lectures are online via Zoom. Uh, so our lectures are online via Zoom. Probably in April 2023, we may be doing on campus and online. We are not sure about that yet. But currently, for this semester, uh, all our lectures have been online via Zoom. And you can call or WhatsApp the number on the screen, below the screen, sorry, 0501149296. And, uh, Whatever be the case, you'll be provided with the guidelines that you need. So that is the idea about that. So as we go into December 2022, please know the verbs. And if you go through the past questions, let me say this. If you are taking the ICA past questions under the no syllabus from November 2019, please don't solve the past question in an anticipation that something like that will be in the exam hall. The examiner is not in the repetition game. Go through the November 2019 up to August 2022 papers to get an idea of the verbs that the examiner is using and probably an idea about the solution or whatever the heck. But don't think because you are solving November 2019 to August 2022, you go to the exam hall and see something similar and you pass. No. So you have to be careful about the past questions. That is why I tell students, um, in exposing yourself to questions, yes, the past questions can be used, but you have to go outside the past questions because the examiner is not in a repetition mood. And there are various aspects of each of the topics that the examiner can set questions from. 
So if you are looking at the past questions, you will just be looking at different, different scenarios. But what of the what are what uh, of the other scenarios remaining, which the examiner has not examined yet? And that is where an examination analysis comes in, or you being able to expose yourself comes in. So yes, you can go through the past questions, November 2019 up to August 2022. But don't think that because you, you have solved November 2019 to August 2022, you're going to see something similar in the exam hall. You will be shocked because the context of questions will definitely be different. The context of question would definitely be different. You take financial statement. You take the standards. Yes, the examiner had brought IAS 16, IAS 20, IAS 12. But there are various aspects of IAS 12 the examiner has not examined yet. There are various aspects of IAS 16 the examiner has not examined yet. And in December 2022, those other remaining aspects which has not been examined yet are what the examiner will be examining. That's how this whole ICA exams works. Because I've had people telling me that, oh, insurance has solved all the past questions. <laughs> I'm not saying you are wasting time, but I'm just telling you that <laughs> that is not a guarantee for you to pass. So you have to expose yourself to questions outside the past question. If your past question is your holy grail, and I've seen people, one time I had people calling us and saying that they are selling ICA past questions, will we buy for our students? I'm like, are you smoking something or what? The question that is available on the ICA website, you are selling it. Can you imagine that? And people buy these and uh, they think that by so doing, they will pass the exams. No. There is only a way you have to pass the exams. Understand the basic principles. Understand the structure of the exams expose yourself to a lot of questions. Understand the basic principles, understand the structure of the exams, and expose yourself to a lot of questions, not just the past questions. Not just the past questions. You must expose yourself to questions outside the past questions because that is where you see things that the examiner has not examined yet, which he is likely to examine going into the future. And that is something that you need to understand very well. That's something you need to understand very well. So that is the idea about how you answer questions in the exam hall, the various verbs that the examiner is going to be using, and most importantly, how you write out your answers. So key takeaway, do not just pay attention to the mark allocation, pay attention to the verb that the examiner used. Because the verb the examiner used determine the answer you are going to be writing out. If the examiner says explain and it is one mark, you still have to follow the rule of explanation. If the examiner says assess and it is two marks, you still have to follow the rule of assessment. Not just looking at the marks but you have to follow the rule of the verb. That is how you position yourself to ultimately pass the examination. All right? So that is it about that. Any other questions for me? Any other questions for me? Something you would want me to share my thought on briefly? On Wednesday, I'm going to be coming your way at the same time, 4.30 p.m., and I'm going to be talking to you on Wednesday about time allocation and the questions you solve in the exam or how you position yourself to really solve questions. Because timing is very crucial. If you start with the wrong question, you're going to be punished. You're going to be punished. So on Wednesday, we're going to be going through subject by subject. And then I'm going to tell you, show you the blueprints on how you approach each paper, the Likely questions you can easily solve, get your marks so that you solve other ones later. And I've told you this over and over again, like you have writing financial reporting or corporate reporting, then you start with a consolidated financial statement. I don't know, 99.9% .9 of the time you are 
putting yourself in a spot that you shouldn't be able to put yourself in. Because if care is not taken, you're going to use more than the 36 minutes required for the uh, consolidated financial statement question. When there is some theories there on ethics, some theories on consolidation, or some theories on conceptual framework that you could have easily written out. And some of you have faced this before. You are on your way, going home in the vehicle, then for some reason, you know, a voice will whisper to you, let me flip through the question. Then as you flip through the question, you realize that, ah, there was a 10 mark question theory somewhere that you could have answered easily and you had spent all your time answering a different question, which you couldn't even answer to your satisfaction. There and there you start panicking and you know that you're going to fail the exams. So on Wednesday, I'm going to provide you with the blueprint and we will go through the time allocation, uh, how you approach each subject individually to increase your chances of ultimately passing the exams. So that is it about that. And that is what I would want to share with you on that particular case. Uh, let me see what I have here. Good evening, please. When will you do overall overview of fm i think we discussed that in our discussion on friday but on wednesday as we are looking at the key aspects or the time allocation and the questions you can answer quickly in the exam hall i'm going to be giving an overview because we will take all the subjects one after the other and talk about them on wednesday so you can join the stream on wednesday and we'll be able to uh deal with that because as i'm talking about the allocation of the time and what you answer first, I will also be giving you the structure of the exams generally and the overview of the course. So you know what to learn, what to be on the lookout for and all of those things as well. So that's it about that. Thank you very much for joining us on the stream today. And um, it's really, really uh great to have you guys joining us on the stream uh, on youtube on facebook as well as on linkedin and on wednesday at 4 30 p.m we will continue with the discussion remember if you have not subscribed to our youtube channel you subscribe and click the bell icon so that when i go live you'll be the first person to be notified you can also download the insura premium mobile application the name you see on facebook on whatsapp on whatever the heck you download the mobile application and you'll be able to uh, get access to some exclusive contents that are not here on YouTube so you can use to uh, study well in that case. Then then you can check out our audio uh, or podcast on the various podcast platform. Wherever you get your podcast from, just search for Insura Premium and you'll get access to our audio content so you can be listening to me on the go. Uh, wherever you are, you could be listening to me and that will help you to increase your chances of understanding because science has proven when you're able to engage all your senses in learning an act or learning a material, it tells your brain that this is an important material. Hence, your remembrance rate is going to, or your, your retention rate and your remembrance rate is going to be higher. So listening, watching, you know, reading over, verbally speaking it out, all of these senses when they are engaged will help you to be able to ultimately uh, remember what you are studying, understand them very well, and uh, pass the examination. Kwesi Eboa said, please, FR, which question do you tackle first? Uh, like I said, we'll discuss about the allocation and questions to answer first on Wednesday. So Kwesi, you join us on Wednesday. Uh, at 4.30 p.m. and we're going to be talking about that. Simon said, he said, good evening, sir. How can I join your PSA lectures? Our public sector lectures are on Mondays at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And you can enroll in the course on our website or send us a WhatsApp message. You can see the number scrolling below the screen, 050 uh, or visit insurapremium.com and you can enroll in a course there. And you send us a message on WhatsApp, you'll be able to be added to our WhatsApp page and you can join our public sector lectures live via Zoom and you get access to also the playback on our website as well as in our mobile application. So that's it about that. Remember we have these books also available, Financial Management, 
taxation, advanced audit and assurance, corporate reporting, financial reporting, and public sector accounting and finance. We have all these books available. And you can send us a message on WhatsApp, 0501149296. You can see it uh, below your screen and uh, send us a message and we'll be able to deliver wherever you are located for you. So thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Facebook, thank you guys for the thumbs up and the sharing. I really appreciate it. Doris Owusu and Sa and uh, Silence Dodu and others. Thank you very much. YouTube, thanks for the thumbs up. LinkedIn, thanks for the engagement as well on the video. And I'll catch you Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. as we look at the questions to solve and how we can allocate our times, our time so we increase our chances of passing the examination. Remember, you don't necessarily have to solve all the questions to be able to pass the exams because time may not be on your side. So you have to then allocate yourself and work in a certain mindset as you head into the exam hall to ensure that you answer the questions that you can answer as fast as possible so you can pass the examination. Stay safe and I'll catch you on Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. as we continue with our discussion. Bye-bye.